Welcome to your full guide to YouTube analytics because it's time to finally get it. Howdy howdy everyone, Nate here. This is the haters guide to YouTube analytics because this video is a one-stop thrashing of all of the less useful analytics in favor of the ones that you actually need to be paying attention to. This is what I would tell my mom if she were to ask me about YouTube analytics. And coincidentally, it's what I'd tell your mom also. It is time for a YouTube analytics teardown using the worst performing video in recent memory on this channel you're watching right now. YouTube analytics sucks you don't. Starting with the reach tab, the things you need to pay attention to and the things you need to ignore. Impressions. You can safely ignore this in most cases because it is a byproduct of all of the other things we're going to be talking about. Impressions click-through rate. Is that CTR as in choose the right? No, it is click-through rate. This is when a video is shown anywhere as an impression, meaning it is shown anywhere on the YouTube platform, somewhere on their screen real estate. I get messages about this practically all the time. Why did my video not do better? My impressions click-through rate was seven, eight, nine, or over 10%. What people don't realize is that impressions click-through rate is directly inversely related to how far your video spreads. If you have a video that has a really high click-through rate, it could be that it's performing really well with your core group of audience, but when it spreads further, when it's tested further by the algorithm, it doesn't get clicked. Which is why on the inverse, if you have a video really spread, most of the time, your impressions click-through rate will go down. Views, 6.6K less than usual. <laughs> oh, okay. Now views, combined with unique viewers, create an interesting combination. Views being the overall blanket metric of how well that video did, and unique viewers is the amount of times your video was rewatched by the same person. So if you have a video that has a low amount of unique viewers, but a higher amount of views, that means that it's getting rewatched by the same people a lot of times. If you scroll down, you see this. How viewers find this video. This one is snazzy because it gives a clear indicator of how your video performs across the different locations that it could perform on the platform and the different algorithms associated with each of these. If your browse features traffic is low, it's time to improve your title and thumbnail such that it stands out among all of the other videos that it is put around on the homepage. Channel pages. This indicates how many people are visiting your channel and watching your video from your channel. I wouldn't worry too much if this channel page's percentage is low. Next, suggested videos. If this percentage is low across a lot of videos on your channel, it typically means that your videos aren't clearly being associated with other pieces of content on the platform. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but one of the best sources of traffic for topical chain viewership from a viewer is watching one video and then watching another video and then watching another video. And suggested is one of the main indicators that you've created a piece of content that attaches well with another other video on the platform. Next, notifications. These are the OGs. These are the ones that have turned on notifications and watch your video because they were notified of it. And shout out to anybody watching this video who arrived from notifications. You're the OGs. Other YouTube features. This is the mysterious area that nobody knows what it actually means. And I'm convinced the creators of the YouTube platform and the algorithms themselves don't know what other YouTube features actually means. But in reality, I think it's just a conglomerate of all the other places that your video could show up. Content suggesting your video. This one is good to indicate where your videos are being found in the suggested algorithm. What other videos your video is being associated with and getting traffic from. In YouTube search terms, this box becomes more useful if a higher percentage of your traffic is arriving from YouTube search, which this video in question, it is not very much. It's just 1.6%. And apparently one or two of those views came from how to draw rocks. I have no idea how that happened. YouTube analytics are a mess. You're a masterpiece. That's not bad. Engagement. Average view duration is the average amount of time in the universe that the audience decided to watch your video. Meaning, even if they decided to watch your video sped up or slowed down, the average amount of real human time spent watching this video is indicated right here. Now, average percentage viewed also counts, and in my mind, is an even better indicator of how enjoyable a video is. Because if you publish a 10 minute video and the average viewer watches the entire 10 minutes at two times speed, that video will give an average view duration of five minutes because that's actual time in the universe and they watched it at double the speed, meaning it's half, et cetera, et cetera, math. But the average percentage viewed would be 100% even though they watched it at double speed. Both of these are good, but average percentage viewed is like the smarter cousin. YouTube analytics invite you to boop the like button on this video if it is being helpful to you. And now it is time to talk about the holy grail of YouTube analytics. Key moments for audience retention. Maybe we just add that in post. <laughs> D don't 
Don't include me going in the edit. I love key moments for audience retention and you should too because in here is what gives you a really good indicator of how well you are delivering the promise of your video. Whatever you said in the title and thumbnail, the packaging on your video, this shows how well you're doing it. Spikes mean something especially interesting was happening or most of the audience is skipping an ad read. <laughs> Dips mean you lost their attention or something unpleasant happened at that moment. Top moments are the golden nuggets in your nugget nachos showing where you kept your audience's attention over an extended period of time. Those are the best. The rest of these on the right hand side, I wouldn't worry about too much except remixed. Shout out to the daily mix up for creating the one single remix of this video. Likes versus dislike and end screen element click rate are both good to know, but they aren't a make or break on most videos. YouTube analytics are a toxic X and you still check them daily. What? Who wrote this? Nick, let's talk audience tab. Returning versus new viewers. This is an even better visual of some of the things we saw previously in this video. Returning viewers are the people that have previously watched your stuff. Viewers have already watched your channel previously and returned to watch this video. New viewers discovered your channel from this one video. YouTube did its work and they got new people in this video. Pause everything. Let's talk some real talk here. You're always going to want a good mix of both returning and new viewers across several videos over a period of time on your channel. Returning viewers are amazing and they're an indicator of a healthy core audience of viewership on your channel. New viewers are amazing because they're an indicator of new viewership that are the lifeblood of any good, healthy channel. So if either one of those is low for a consistent period of time, I really need to start looking into changing my content to either retain viewership better, to get more returning viewers, or appeal to a broader audience and new viewership to get new viewers. Subscribers is just that. It's the amount of people that watched your video and said, hey, this is valuable. If you want to increase the amount of subscribers on any given video, you need to increase the perceived value for your audience. Meaning, I want more of whatever is contained in this video. It could be entertainment, it could be they laughed really well. When you increase that value, the number of subscribers you will gain from any given piece of content will go up. Scrolling down, we have device type. You and I are gonna want to pay attention to the size of the screen that people are watching on. For this video, the majority was mobile phone. Hey, mobile phone users, if you're currently eating a meal, I want to hear from you in the comments. <laughs> One of the things YouTube themselves have been pointing out more and more is the rise in the prevalence of TV viewership. Now TV viewers, as we all know, are all rolling in the dough, meaning they have more time typically to sit and watch a piece of content. Coincidentally, it is more difficult on most TVs to skip ads. Therefore, they tend to have a higher RPM. Watch time from subscribers. In my opinion, people shouldn't worry about this too much aside from giving really terrible invites to subscribe by guilt tripping people into, the, you, you know what I'm talk about only 30% of my viewership are subscribed. I'm gonna guilt you into subscribing. You know what I'm talking about. YouTube analytics are tricky. Luckily, you're a treat. No. Let's talk revenue. Now moving below estimated revenue up here down to video performance here, this box right here, you have very little direct control over this. The best way to increase the amount that you make on a video is to make it really engaging because that leads to increased repeat viewership and also longer duration watched, which means on the platform, more ads consumed. The other thing that many people don't realize, especially starting off, is that RPM will vary video to video on your channel. So on this channel, one video may be $4, another may be $10. And this is where we need to have a heart to heart, you and I. For most most creators starting out, you're not going to make it on YouTube ad revenue alone. It's just simply not feasible. So either you've already got something to offer that you're hoping to lead traffic to from your channel, or you should add something to your repertoire that you can start sharing with your audience. And the best location I have found is to host that something on your own website using a .store domain. The reason for that is unlike a .net or a .com where it, the website could be anything, when your audience visits your channel .store, what are they expecting? Yeah, they're expecting a store. It's a massive advantage to you as the creator because they've already got a buyer mindset and the conversion rate for a dot .store versus any other domain is much higher. So I invite you to claim your dot .store domain below. And yes, I spoke with the folks at dot .store and I got you a massive discount. A quick tip there, you want to go to that page and search your channel or business name to make sure it's not claimed already. YouTube analytics are trying to ruin your day, but you were already doing that yourself. Now let's talk overview. If you scroll down to 
here, YouTube has been getting better and better by giving real human language explaining why a video performed the way it did. If you haven't looked at this recently, I'm gonna invite you to read these notes on your next upload. In this video, I was testing a new camera setup. I was testing a camera that followed my face around. So when I moved my face in my natural conversational style, the camera was also following me. And the analytics themselves seem to point to this video, the audience watching this video not enjoying that very much. YouTube analytics are dry. You're juicy. That is weird. The bonus round. If you go to analytics content, you scroll down to key moments of audience retention. This gives you your latest videos in the last 365 days, these key moments across several videos at once. When you select intros, this is giving you a good picture of which your best intros are and your least good intros based on retention. And the same can be done for top moments, spikes, and dips. Which if we look at this one, for example, this segment right here between Minute 601 and 854 was a top moment. Whatever was happening right there was retaining the audience really well. Bonus two, the trends tab. If you go to analytics and trends, what I can say about this trends tab right now as of recording this is that it has a good personality. <laughs> Who am I kidding? It's, it's pretty bad right now. I think there's potential for this trends tab, but as of right now, it is really off. The inspiration tab, however, if you go to content and you hit inspiration, this is bonus C, by the way, this one is getting better and better because what it's doing is using AI and the data from YouTube itself, at least I'm assuming that's where the data is coming from, to pull the highest interest ideas from your audience viewership. Attempting to predict high view videos you could attempt making in the future and that based on your audience interest will probably do well. Now, every YouTube analytic, especially the more advanced analytics that we didn't cover in this video is useful in its own way. But this video needs to fill the void of preventing people from falling into the void of YouTube analytics. There's another video I created that also fills a void of not knowing what step to take next based on where you currently are in your current growth. That's right, I made a whole video outlining the plan based on my direct working with clients of what I'd recommend you do next. YouTube analytics are lying, but you've lied to yourself before too, so it's fine. <laughs> Some of these are pretty sus. YouTube analytics are hard, you aren't. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm gonna include these and more in the pinned comment on this video because some of them are just, wow. <sighs> YouTube analytics exist, you exist. Yeah, that works. <laughs>